Hey, hey, Warrior Saints, welcome to the COVID-19 Survival Series, our live stream at 1 p.m. We are a little bit late. We had a little bit of a, an intro with a glitch, but I think we got it figured out. As we do with all things, let's begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Welcome. Glad you're with us. We are going to talk today about some of the whining that's going on. We're going to talk about 2 Corinthians 11 and 12. Before we do that, allow me to make my little pitch here. We have a great thing that we put out there, and I'm I'm overwhelmed. Thankful, um, thankful to all of you who are so supportive and encouraged by you. I think we're, we're trying very hard to make as powerful an impact on the world as we can, despite our limited abilities and resources. We are, um, we've got something at warriorsaints.org that I want you to check out. It's called the Way of the Warrior Saint Weekly. And what this program is, is designed to help us through this COVID virus quarantine. And not just to get through it, not just to hang on by a thread by the tippy tip of our fingernails that we barely survive, but to use this as an opportunity to become better men and women, stronger men and women than we started. That, so that through this virus, and, or not through the virus, forgive me, but through the quarantine time of the virus, we use it as an opportunity to become great. So that we might be really wonderful men, wonderful women, wonderful spouses, making a positive impact on the world. So that when it's done and the quarantine is over and we get out back to the world, we are going to, we're not going to miss a beat. We're going to be light years ahead. We do this through instruction, video instruction that is biblically based. I mean, always all things from God himself. I'm nothing, I'm just someone who has lips that says God's word to the world. We do so with practical and applicable points that we get every day. So we find our biblical point on whatever topic we're talking about, and we find practical and applicable things that we can implement immediately into our lives so that we start that moment. And lastly, we hope that through creative editing and perhaps some great joke telling that it's fun because life it's tough, but it's also beautiful. And we want to take that positive blessing from God and, and just let it overflow into everything that we do and everyone that we interact with. In this series, the COVID-19 survival series that you find at warriorsaints.org, it is focused on three areas of our lives. One, in relation to ourselves. How do we become better men? How do we become better women? So that, two, we can have better relationships with others. How do we become better husbands, better wives, better boyfriends, better girlfriends, better children, better parents, better coworkers, better employers, better with our enemies even? So that three, we could be more successful in our work life. And whatever that may be, do you own a business? Do you work for someone? Are you the most important type of business? Do you stay at home and raise a family? How do we find ourselves better so that we relate to other better so that we can work better? This is the goal of the way of the warrior saint weekly, but that that's not the end of it. The beautiful part about it is the way of the warrior saint weekly is going to be at least during the quarantine period, become the way of the warrior saint daily. What that means is for the same cost, we're going to, we're going to put stuff up every single day, not just once a week. So every day during the quarantine, there will be a lesson in somehow in those three areas of self, other, and career, and always based on a crucifixional life. How do I sacrifice myself for the sake of other? How do I sacrifice my ego for the sake of success? How do I sacrifice my desire so that I might make an awesome, positive contribution to the world? All of the answer to those questions is through a crucifixional living guided by God, which is what we're hoping to teach. And it's kind of exploded. And I, like I say, I'm humbled and I'm thankful. Our team rejoices with all of you. The army grows. It really does grow. And we are, we're thankful. Please, I mean, it's not even $20. Come on, man. Let's, that's, that's like a, a, a one Postmate Big Mac meal on, one Big Mac meal on Postmates. I mean, you can do that. Get out there. Subscribe today. You will find it at warriorsaints.org. That being said... We're going to dive right into scripture. Today's live stream, we're going to deal with 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and the Apostle Paul. And it's kind of set up, I think, let me put this out there first. We all know that the COVID virus is a very serious thing. I mean, 
There are maybe some who take it lightly, maybe because of their discomfort, but we really, in our hearts and our minds, we know this is a serious thing. I mean, people have died from this, and I don't know what the number is today. It's changing all the time. Um, it may not be as, as many as the bubonic plague, for sure, but people have died. And so that, in and of itself, it means that it is a value to take seriously. I mean, take it seriously. We're, we're all quarantined at home for a reason. I mean, it's serious enough to be taken seriously. That being said, we also want to recognize the blessings that we've got. All right, so anybody who's watching this, let me rephrase that. Probably most people who are watching this are not in a hospital bed dying from COVID. There may be some, but most of us are at home, comfortable, in living wherever we live, certainly with fears about the unknown, but we're watching this on some kind of device, which in and of itself is a blessing. And yet I'm hearing a lot of... I'm just say it, whining and complaining about how terrible this is and to be stuck at home and how dreadful it is. And, you know, I'm miserable and I've got cabin fever and I'm going stir crazy and I'm bored and the fears, I'm afraid. Will I get sick? Is there toilet paper at the grocery store? Will I have a job when I get done? Will my business survive? Am I going to kill my wife? Is she going to kill me? <laughs> Whatever it may be throughout this whole thing, we have a lot of complaining that's going on. People are complaining, even I heard someone say, you know, well, not someone, someone's talking about how devastating it is that we can't be in church and that churches are empty and that this is somehow uh, an abrogation against, of our First Amendment rights. And look, I get it. I'm, you can't imagine what it's like to be here in my shoes preaching to a camera in empty pews. I mean, like, where are my beloved people? They're at home. All watching on live stream, I got it, but it is certainly an uncomfortable thing. And we're complaining about, you know, an empty church and empty pews. All of that to say, let's reframe. My goal today is for us to reframe what's going on. And we have, even in our ministry, we have pivoted a little bit so that we're looking at things differently. And the first thing I want us to recognize that, and I started with it, is COVID-19 is serious. Coco V is not to be trifled with. I, I, I mean, everyone who has mocked it, whether it be a professional basketball player or, or famous uh, actors or politicians, when they go out and mock it, they get it. I mean, it's somehow it's like someone slapping them and saying, wake up, Gina. I mean, don't mock it. However, let's also recognize that throughout the history of the world, there have always been monsters to fight whether that be in the sickness sense, the bubonic plague, or the swine flu, or any other type of disease. Heck, the regular seasonal flu we fight every year and many, many people die from it. This is serious, but it's another one. And so that says to us to recognize that there is no life to be led that doesn't have monsters to face. And I didn't even talk about wars and dictators and anger and gambling and infidelity and blah, 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 right? I'm talking about just disease. There's a, a line of them and there will always be a line of them. There will be one after this. I don't know what it is. I don't know what they're going to call it. I don't know when it's coming. My prayer is that it won't. But we also have to recognize in this reframing that it's one more monster that we have to face. And so rather than look at it as though this is a life-altering, life-ending tragedy, I know for some have died from it. I got it. But rather than for us to look at it like that, as to look at it as the monster that God has allowed into our presence for us to learn how to and prove ourselves to be crucifixional. So let's keep that in mind. And then we start to recognize that for the majority of us, again, I keep saying it because I don't want to get caught and have people yelling at me and all that kind of stuff. You're so insensitive. I get that people are dying. But for the majority of us who don't have it or who do have it and are not going to die from it, it has become something that we whine about, right? It really has. And I'm saying, look at this as an opportunity to be different, to be better by taking, as a great example for us, the apostle himself, Paul. The apostle, not an apostle. We call in the Orthodox Church, Paul is the great apostle. The founder of the churches to the Gentiles, which, oh, by the way, you and I are all a part of the church of the Gentiles. The church to the Jews didn't seem to have much effect. No offense to our Jews from Jesus, but most of us are of the church of the Gentiles, which means Paul is our progenitor. And Paul's story is fascinating. For those who don't know much about St. Paul, he was a Jew. He was a rabbi. He was a teacher of the law, a Pharisee, 
right? One who knew the law well. He was also uniquely a Roman citizen, so he was able to play both sides of the fence. And he hated the church and Christians. And in fact, the book of Acts even tells us that when the first martyr, St. Stephen, was stoned to death, that Paul was there watching and assenting. Doesn't mean that he threw rocks. I don't know if he did or didn't. No one will ever know. But he was there and was okay with it. He was not a fan of the church. And in his Damascus experience, or sorry, on his road to Damascus experience, he encountered the Lord and had a complete switch and change of heart. And the church that he was persecuting, he became the most ardent champion for. And he became the, the proclaimer of the gospel of the cross. And because of that, you talk about COVID being a monster. Because of that, Paul faced a monster that was unbelievable. The persecution that St. Paul faced by his fellow Jews and his fellow Romans always attacking him for preaching this gospel were horrors that you and I probably couldn't imagine. And we hear this in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. For those who want to follow along in your Bible, please do so. Read 2 Corinthians 11 and we're going to start in verse 21b. So that's the second half of verse 21. When we hear and he's talking about his, you know, his brother Jews in the faith, Christians, but who were from the Jewish faith. And he says, I'm speaking as a fool. I dare to boast of that. Verse 22, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am a better one. Listen, I am a better one, he says. And then he begins with far greater labors, I've worked harder, with far more imprisonments, the dude's been in jail a bunch of times, with countless beatings, often near death. Five times I have received at the hand of the Jews the 40 lashes less one. They whipped him 39 times on five separate occasions. Three times I've been beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, and that doesn't mean smoking the dude, people. That means they threw rocks at his head to try to kill him. Three times I've been shipwrecked. A night and a day I've been adrift at sea. Can you imagine, like, three different times you're stuck on an island somewhere with a shipwreck and you don't know if you're going to get off? And then one of those times you're floating at sea on a raft a la... Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Titanic in freezing waters hanging onto a raft hoping you don't die for a full night and a day. He's been on frequent journeys. Danger in the rivers. Danger from robbers. Danger from his own people. Danger from the Gentiles. Danger in the city. Danger in the wilderness. Danger at sea. Danger from false brethren. In toil and hardship. Through many a night where he could not sleep. I don't know about you, but man, if I miss even a couple hours of sleep, I'm grumpy. How many nights without any sleep, pulling all-nighters? I'd be a mess. In hunger and thirst. Often without food. In cold and exposure. And apart from all these other things, there is the daily pressure upon me of my anxiety for the churches. So like, in spite of all this physical pounding and near death on multiple occasions. His heart is most heavy because he's worried about the churches that he's teaching, his people whom he loves, who he has preached the gospel they have believed and are now they are under assault and being martyred for their faith. He worries about them and has anxiety for them constantly. Now, can you imagine that? And in spite of all of this, I'm not the greatest mind in the world, but I've read scripture a lot. And I have not heard St. Paul whining about it. I mean, we certainly hear about the, the heaviness of it and the challenges of it, by all means. But in these moments of weakness, he does not whine. He doesn't say, oh, poor me. Like, I wish you would go away. In fact, in a weird kind of way, Paul says the opposite. Not only does he not want it to go away, but he embraces it. He rejoices in it. Even in Romans chapter 4, chapter 5, he says, we what? Rejoice in our sufferings. We talked about this a couple of days ago. We rejoice in our sufferings, says Paul, because suffering produces endurance. I'm getting better at it. And endurance produces character. Now I'm becoming a real man of the gospel. And character leads to hope, which says, huh, I might get through this. And that's the whole message that I want us to see today, that we're spending a lot of time complaining about getting stuck at home. And maybe you have to eat the same food over and over, or maybe you're tired of your wife. Maybe she's tired of you. <laughs> 
Maybe your kids bug you. Maybe the phone's ringing too much. I don't know. What else could there be that are, is so tragic in our lives? I mean, we're, I get that we're suffering from work. I got it. Like, it's affected everybody. Our churches are affected. Like financially, I mean, people aren't here to put money in the trays. It hurts. We've got to pay bills, man. It doesn't, we're not quitting because this, I mean, it's, it's affected everything and everyone. Nobody is unscathed. Maybe the Charmin company is the only one that got away unscathed. Okay, but the rest, of, we're all feeling it. And yet, is that type of suffering so great that we could even compare to St. Paul? I mean, I know you think you know the answer. I know you know the answers. I'm, I'm, again, let's go back. I'm not minimizing. I started this lesson by saying this is serious. I'm not minimizing it. But I am saying, look, let's reframe it so that we can say, all right, this is rough. This is a tough time. I got it. But I'm going to use this as an opportunity to embrace that suffering to embrace the weakness that I may feel. And here's where we jump into chapter 12. This is fabulous. Right after St. Paul goes into that, in chapter 12, he says, Three times I have besought the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. Listen. My power is made perfect in weakness. I will all the more boldly, says St. Paul, boast of my weaknesses that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Do you see what he's talking about here? In, this is 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. Look, I am weak. And he gave us that list of all those things that he got attacked. And in that, in that perceived weakness by the, the way the world perceives it, I am actually following Christ. What he's saying is I'm living a crucifixional life. I am sacrificing myself for the sake of something greater. In this case, Paul's case, the gospel. And as Christ appeared weak to the world and appeared like a loser and a robber and a criminal as they hung him on the cross, what appeared to be weakness by worldly standards was in fact victory in that in the cross he conquers death. And as a sign of that, guess what happened three days later? Oh, his grave? It was empty. And likewise, Paul, by taking his own cross, which was a lot of suffering, as we saw, we see what the world is mocking Paul as being weak, is in fact, by his own crucifixional life, spreading the gospel so that 2,000 some years later, to this day, the Christian faith continues to exist. And I would even say with boldness, thrive. I mean, come on. There's a bunch of you out there right now watching some dude in a church preach the gospel. 2,000 years later. To me, that's pretty impressive. And it's not because of me. It's because of God, obviously, and whose word has prevailed through the preaching of the, this guy named the Apostle Paul. And I don't know if you can see it. I'm not going to move the camera, but even on our icon screen here on the right end, we have himself, the Apostle Paul. Can't have a good screen without the Apostle. Do you know? I mean, you see it. And all of this to say that it's, it's time for us to reframe. Check your mind a little bit. Turn it around a little bit and start to recognize, okay, Christ used the cross as an opportunity to conquer death. Paul used the suffering that he endured as an opportunity to preach the gospel. What can I use the cross of COVID-19 to better myself, to strengthen myself, so that when the quarantine is over, I'm out the gates, man, and I'm running and pounding it and doing my success in whatever area we want to be. I don't know. I mean, there, I, it's not for me to tell you, what you where you can and cannot be successful. I can only throw you some ideas and some uh, trigger some thought. But it comes from you to recognize, what can I do? How can I make a difference, be more impactful in the world, and use this as an opportunity not to whine about it, I get it. It sucks. I'm standing teaching the world in an empty church. I got it. People are dying from it. But it's an opportunity that I can make myself better, make my, a bigger impact when the quarantine's over. Figure it out. Spend some time. Maybe once this is done, turn off the devices for a little while. Turn them off. Quiet down a little bit. No TV, no Netflix. Just quiet down a little bit and think, pray, and say, all right, how can I use this as an opportunity? Interestingly enough, we... Um, are going to upload later today. So I'll end with this. God bless you guys. Again, I'm on fire. I'm sweating again. <laughs> you got me all riled up. I love it. Um, but I think it's important stuff because I think the opportunity is in front of us. So we can whine or we can take advantage of it. We just filmed today. We're going to upload it later today on the Warrior Saints Weekly. 
which I talked about in the beginning, warriorsaints.org, go subscribe. We have some, uh, a lesson about this very topic and with some very practical points, very like things that we can implement today to help us as we begin our journey uh, going through this. It's really the first or the second step on focus of self so that we can then turn to focus on other and then focus on work. Um, appreciate you guys. <laughs> I laugh at myself because I'm like all riled up. I'm sweating. I get so, you know, uh, so into it. But I think it's real. I think it's legit. And I do think it's serious. And I'm asking us as seriously as we take the COVID virus, let us also take the gospel and the opportunity that's before us to make that powerful impact on the world. We will be back tomorrow at... Uh, the same time in order to uh, have our next live stream next week. Tomorrow's Friday, right? Isn't that right? Today's Thursday. I'm so lost. I know we're all lost. Um, Friday, we're going to keep to one. But uh, coming next week, we will begin to move our live stream from 1 p.m. Pacific to 11 a.m. Pacific. So we're going to bang back to 11 a.m. Pacific. And we have an interesting class for you on Monday about about holy liturgy. It's a great one. Our pastoral uh, assistant, Greg, is leading a seminar with uh, the Department of Missions and Evangelism. So we're gonna, we're gonna get all that info out to you, get it out there, it'll be great. Honestly, you're gonna love it. It's about liturgy at the high point in the Eucharist. So it's great stuff. Stay with it. We will see you then. All of that to be said, thank you. We appreciate all of your support. We're so thankful to you people for joining us at warriorsaints.org. We will see you tomorrow. And until then, keep walking in the way of the warrior saint.